I know that um, you didn't come here for a lecture. <laughs> so you came here to dance and uh, be married and uh, socialize. So I'm going to make this uh, short. It's actually a glimpse of the life of Dr. Zer Salin, not really a lecture. Um, the Philippine Republic Act of, uh, 16, of 646 that chartered the Knights of Rizal in June 1951 mandates that all KOR organizations all over the world to revere the memory of Dr. Jose Rizal through holding programs commemorating Rizal's birth and martyrdom. Dr. Rizal is not only a revered individual, but also represents a standard to live by. He represents love of country and people, promotion of international understanding, veneration of noble ideals, valuing honor, strive to do justice, finding purposeful meaning in life, upholding freedom, maintaining tolerance and understanding attitude, believing in the value of education, promoting social justice and general welfare, believing in industriousness, self-reliance, perseverance, and is truthful and is honest in thoughts, words, and in deeds. Events that were to transpire in December 1896 were the culmination of a lifelong work of unselfishness and nobility that would lead to unity against evil. It is almost sacrilegious that after Christmas, a celebration of the birth of our Savior was the beginning of the end of Dr. Jose Rizal. It was the day of his mock trial by a military court under Governor General Camilo G. Polavieja. The verdict was already predetermined, death by firing squad. I wonder what would be going on on Dr. Rizal's mind Christmas of 1896. Did he know that he was going to be sentenced to death? Or was he hopeful that he would be exonerated and live to see the Philippines as a province of Spain? Did he think of past Christmases to cheer him up? Did he think of the 1891 Christmas, five years ago then, in Hong Kong, with his family reunited? His mother, father, brother, and sisters were all present to enjoy Christmas Eve together. Or was he reminiscing the 1888 Christmas in London that was spent with the Beckett family that led to his brief fling with Gertrude Beckett? Or was he reminiscing the 1886 Christmas in Berlin that was spent with Maximo Viola who lent him money to publish Noli? All good memories of Christmases past. Rizal was good to cherish past Christmases that brought him joy and happiness. Spain, at the end of the century, was in no good mood and wanted to make a political statement. In 1896, the Cuban Revolution just got a big financial boost from the upcoming power, the United States. Spanish imperialist power was in peril. As the Philippine Revolution was gaining momentum in Cavite, Morong, Bulacan, Rizal was made an example of the wrath that awaits revolutionaries regardless of his relationship or lack thereof with the Katipunan. If you will look at their program, the picture there at the bottom, one historian puts it, at 6.30 a.m., a trumpet sounded at Fort Santiago. The soldiers aligned formation and moved to their designated place for the execution. Rizal was dressed in black suits a black derby hat, black shoes, white shirt, and black tie. One of the priests blessed him and offered him a crucifix to kiss. Rizal reverently bowed his head and kissed it. Then he requested the firing squad commander that he'd be shot facing the firing squad, but his request was denied. Unwillingly, Rizal turned his back to the firing squad and faced the sea. Rizal was not afraid to die. Thus, this Christmas, as Filipinos, and especially to my Knights of Rizal brothers, let us reminisce the beauty that life has to offer. Let's, let us think and appreciate our precious children, our life partners, spouses, our family and friends. Let us remember that no matter what tomorrow will bring, 
no one can take away the beautiful memories of Christmas's past. Merry Christmas to all, Nanong Nis Moriarty.